There are countless stars that we can see in our night sky, and all of them are unique. Some are dim such that they are barely visible without a telescope. Others are bright and can be seen even in the most light-polluted areas. The brightness of a star depends on its composition and its location relative to our planet. Astronomers define star brightness in terms of apparent magnitude, which is how bright the star appears from Earth, and absolute magnitude, which is how the star appears at a standard distance of 32.6 light years, that is equivalent to 10 parsecs. In addition to this, astronomers measure a star's luminosity, which is the amount of energy that a star emits from its surface. Measuring a star's brightness is an ancient procedure, however, today's astronomers use more precise tools and equipment to obtain their measurements. Curious to know the brightest stars in the sky? Keep watching. Passage 1. The brightness of stars is measured using the magnitude scale, which seems a little backwards. Since the lower the number, the brighter the object is and the higher the number, the dimmer it is. This scale is logarithmic and set so that every five steps equals a 100 times decrease in brightness. So magnitude 10 is 100 times dimmer than magnitude 5, which in turn is 100 times dimmer than magnitude 0. More than 2000 years ago, the Greek astronomer Hipparchus was the first to categorize the stars according to their brightness. Basically, he looked at the stars in the sky and classified them by how bright they appear. The brightest stars were of magnitude 1, the next brightest were of magnitude 2, and so on down to magnitude 6, which were the faintest stars he could observe. Human eyes, however, are not very discerning since large differences in brightness actually appear much smaller using this scale. Therefore, light-sensitive charged coupled devices inside digital cameras measure the amount of light coming from stars, and can provide a more precise definition of brightness. Using the scale magnitude, astronomers now define five magnitudes difference as having a brightness ratio of 100. Vega was used as the reference star for the scale. Initially, it had a magnitude of zero, but more precise measurements changed that to 0 0.3. When taking Earth as a reference point, the scale magnitude fails to account for the true differences in brightness, or apparent magnitude, depending on the location of the observer. Different observers will come up with a different measurement, depending on their locations and distance from the star. Stars that are closer to Earth, but fainter, could appear brighter than far more luminous ones that are far away. Therefore, it is useful to establish a convention whereby we can compare two stars on the same footing, without variations in brightness due to different distances complicating the issue. A solution to these variations was to implement an absolute magnitude scale to provide a reference between stars. To do so, astronomers calculate the brightness of stars as they would appear 32.6 light years or 10 parsecs from Earth. Another measure of brightness is luminosity, which is defined in the introduction. It's usually expressed in watts and measured in terms of the luminosity of the sun, or the solar luminosity, which is approximately 3.827 times 10 to the power 26 watts. 3.827 asterisk 10 carat 26 watts and one of the closest stars to Earth, Alpha Centauri A, is about 1.3 times the solar luminosity. To figure out luminosity from absolute magnitude, one must calculate that a difference of 5 on the absolute magnitude scale is equivalent to a factor of 100 on the luminosity scale, for instance, a star with an absolute magnitude of 1 is 100 times as luminous as a star with an absolute magnitude of 6. While the absolute magnitude scale is astronomers' best effort to compare the brightness of stars, there are a couple of main limitations that have to do with the instruments that are used to measure it. First, astronomers must define which wavelength of light they are using to make the measurement. Stars can emit radiation in forms ranging from high-energy X-rays to low-energy infrared radiation. Depending on the type of star, they could be bright in some of these wavelengths and dimmer in others. To address this, scientists must specify which wavelength they are using to make the absolute magnitude measurements. Another key limitation is the sensitivity of the instrument used to make the measurement. In general, as computers have advanced and telescope mirror technology has improved over the years, measurements that are made in recent years have more weight among scientists than those that are made long ago. Paradoxically, the brightest stars are among the least studied by astronomers, but there is at least one recent effort to catalogue their luminosity. A constellation of satellites called Bright, Bright Target Explorer, will measure the variability of brightness between stars. 
Participants in the six satellite project include Austria, Canada, and Poland. The first two satellites launched successfully in 2013. Passage 2. While many stars have a consistent brightness, there are more than 100,000 known and catalogued variable stars. Even our own sun is variable, varying its energy output by about 0.1%, or one thousandth of its magnitude, during its 11-year solar cycle. Variable stars are either intrinsic, meaning their luminosity changes due to features such as expansion, contraction, eruption, or pulsation, or extrinsic, meaning that a star or planet passes in front of the star and blocks the light, or that the change is due to stellar rotation. Stars can also change in luminosity over time. The North Star or Polaris, for example, could have been as much as 4.6 times brighter in ancient times than it was today. A 2014 study noted that the star dimmed for the past few decades but then drastically brightened again. Polaris is part of the class of Cepheid variables, which are extremely luminous stars that have short pulsation periods. The variations in the luminosity allow astronomers to calculate how far away these Cepheids are, making them useful, measuring sticks, if the stars are embedded in galaxies or nebulae. Other types of intrinsic variable stars include cataclysmic variables, which brighten due to outbursts, such as during supernovae explosions, or eruptive variables whose brightness varies during eruptions on the surface, or combinations with interstellar matter. Extrinsic variables include eclipsing binary stars and rotating stars such as pulsars, the cause of supernovae whose electromagnetic radiation is only visible when the beam is directed at Earth. Before listing the brightest stars in the universe, be sure to like or dislike the video so that we can continue to improve our content and make these videos better for you. Plus, be sure to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell button so that you don't miss any of our weekly videos. Passage 3 from our corner of the galaxy, these stars are the most brilliant signposts in the heavens and can be enjoyed even from the light-polluted hearts of major cities. 1. Sirius, all stars shine but none do it like Sirius, the brightest star in the night sky. Aptly named, Sirius comes from the Greek word Sirius, meaning, searing, or, scorching. Blazing at a magnitude of minus 1.42, it's twice as bright as any star in our sky besides the sun Sirius resides in the constellation Carnis Major, the big dog, and is commonly called the dog star. In ancient Greece, the dawn rising of Sirius marked the hottest part of summer, the season's dog days. Sirius no longer marks the hottest part of summer, because it now rises later in the year. This happens because the Earth has been wobbling slowly around its axis in a 25,800-year cycle. This wobble, called precession, is caused by the gravitational attraction of the moon on Earth's equatorial bulge, and it gradually changes the locations of stars on the celestial sphere. The best time to see Sirius is probably in winter, for northern hemisphere observers, because it rises fairly early in the evening. In 1844, the German astronomer Friedrich Bessel observed that Sirius had a wobble, as if it were being tugged by a companion star. And in 1862, Alvin Clark solved this mystery, while testing his new 18.5-inch lens, the largest refracting telescope in the world at that time. Clark discovered that Sirius was not one star but two. This proved to be the first discovery in what became a whole class of stars, the compact stellar remnant or white dwarf. These are stars that, once depleting all their hydrogen, collapse to a very dense core. Astronomers have calculated that Sirius's companion, dubbed Sirius B, contains the mass of the Sun in a package as small as the Earth. 16 milliliters of matter from Sirius B, that is, about one cubic inch of the stuff, would weigh 2,000 kilograms on Earth. At magnitude 8.5, it is one four hundredth as luminous as the Sun. The brighter and larger companion is now known as Sirius A, 2, Canopus. Canopus resides in the constellation Carina, the keel. Carina is one of three modern-day constellations that once formed the ancient constellation of Argo Navis, named for the ship Jason, and the Argonauts sailed in to search for the Golden Fleece. Two other constellations form the Sail, Vela, and the Stern, Puppis. In modern odysseys, spacecraft like Voyager 2 used the light from Canopus to orient themselves in the sea of space. Canopus is a true powerhouse. Its brilliance is due more to its great luminosity than its proximity. This number two on our list of stars.